हेलो 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 हाय गाइस गुड मॉर्निंग वेलकम बैक टू न्यू वीडियो अपॉलोजीज रियली अपॉलोजीज रियली बिग अपॉलोजीज फॉर द नॉइज इन दीवियस वीडियो इट वाज बिकॉज ऑफ माय माइक वाज राइट हियर सो वेन एवर आई वाज गोइंग डाउन इट वाज टचिंग विद माय नेक एंड दस इट वाज गेटिंग डिप्रेस्ड The the voice was getting suppressed, not depressed. Why I'm saying this word depressed again and again? But no worries. Um, we'll see these terms. A uh, number of subarrays that match a pattern one, a number of subarrays that match a pattern two, which simply means that we will simply go on with the very basic brute force approach, and then we'll go on to the most improvised approach. So problem is very simple. It says that we are given an integer array called as nums of size n. So we have an integer array nums of size n. Now we have a pattern array of size n, and the pattern array only contains these three numbers minus one, zero, or a one. Now we have to know a sub array from i to j of size m plus one. Again, remember the sub array we want should be of size m plus one only, and it is said to match the pattern if the following conditions satisfy. I'll let I'll tell you what this following condition means, and ultimately we have to return the count of such a sub arrays in my nums. Again, remember sub arrays. Although in an array of size n, I can have n square number of sub arrays, but for a fixed size, I can have only at max n number of sub arrays, and I want to know all such number of sub arrays which will match the pattern. So, for example, if we have this nums, we know that m. Which is a pattern size is two. So my sub array, which I need to consider, should be of size m plus one, which is three. So in this input nums, I will consider my sub array of size is three. One sub array should be of size three, which will be one two three. Next one will be two three four. Next one will be three four five. Next one will be four five six. Right. So okay, roughly we can say we will have n number of sub array. Again, why are in n? It is less than n, right? So why are you saying n? N because what if the pattern size is one? What if uh, although it is not possible even at the worst possible case because pattern will if the pattern is one so m will be one then you will have for sure at least two and all that stuff like the size m plus one will be two or stuff so but roughly we will have n sub arrays in total. Now for all these sub arrays I have to match okay for each sub array I have known okay this is two three four. It is one such a sub array. I have to match this one such a sub array with my pattern. Now, how I will match it? Okay, let's grab this sub array two, three, four again. I have just grabbed only one sub array. I will try to match it with my pattern. Now, how are they actually matching? They simply have two conditions. You saw it is nums of i, nums of i plus one. If nums of i is less than my nums of i plus one, then I will say that its value is one, which means it should match with the pattern of one. One means increasing, ascending order. If nums of i is equals to your nums of i plus one, which means it is same. So I can say I will say zero. They have given a zero. Okay, these these rules are defined here itself, but I am explaining you these rules that okay, if it is same i and i plus one, it is same. Then I will say zero, which means it is same. It is same. If it was, uh, which means nums of i is less than nums of i plus one, it is one, which means it is increasing or ascending order. And if it is less, which means nums of i is more than nums of i plus one, then it is actually minus one, which means it is decreasing. Now this is what it is given, so I can easily see that okay, two and three, two is less than three, so it is a pattern number one. So okay, value is one, value is one. Yeah, it is matching, matching with a pattern. Okay, go on to next. I and i plus one, which is three and four. Again, it is increasing and increasing as in ascending, ascending, and the pattern also says it is a one. Oh yeah, it is matching with a one. Oh, so this sub array matches with my pattern. So it is a good sub array for me, and I should count its contribution in my answer. So you will see, I will have how many such number of sub arrays of size three. This is one. This is one sub array which will match with my pattern. This is next one which we saw recently. This is next one. And this is next one. So in total, we have four sub arrays. Answer is four. Let's see one more example from which from this we can actually derive again. By so far, you must have thought of that what's a brute force approach. But with this, we'll just simply see actual brute force approach, which means the code and pointers and stuff. So let's write the same thing now. So we have our nums. We have our pattern. Pattern size is m. M is three. So I will have to make a sub array of size four, which is m plus one. So what I will do is 
I will keep on again as you saw here itself. I will have okay my I is here, so I need to know what is the sub array actually, right? So I will keep on moving my J. Okay, J is right now at this point. Okay, this is my sub. This is my sub array, which means uh, J can be here, here, and here, representing that this is my actual sub array. This is my actual sub array. Okay, from this to this is my actual sub array which I have to take. Now. If I just say, okay, my I is starting here and uh, I'll keep on going. And this is my one sub array. Now, okay, I pointer fix is fixed. Uh, how will you define the sub array? You need to know the J pointer also, right? So I'll get, I'm just simply saying, okay, my J pointer, I defines all the sub arrays. J will define that specific sub array. Because if you remember, okay, I will get a sub array. That is great. I will get a sub array, but I need to compare all the consecutive elements with my pattern, right? So I need to have a J also, which means I will define, okay, I will define this is my current sub array, but J will define, I will go on to this actual sub array itself. I'll go on to this sub array, J, J, J and so on and so forth. So you can easily see if your I was here, which was defining, okay, right now you will start off your one sub array. So you know the M plus one is a four. So you know the size will be four. You can see the index is also written here. So you can easily see that you will go up till i plus m minus 1. i is 1, m is 4, minus 1. You will see 4 plus 1, 5, minus 1, 4. You are going on to the specific indexes. Okay, great. But that is right now. Okay, that makes sense. Makes sense. Um, so I will go on. And for every consecutive element, again, this i was now gone. Now it is a j turn. Because I just say, okay, this is one specific sub array. But J will say that, okay, I need to compare this sub array with my pattern. So J and J plus one, I will go and compare that. If it is same, it should be matching with my pattern value. As simple as that. Okay, because you can, you can see that, okay, four and four, four and four. By this fact, four and four is same. Same we know, same we know that it should have been a zero. But my pattern says it's a one so for sure this is not true and the same way uh same way my if i take some other sub array let's say i take this specific sub array so okay one and four which means it is increasing increasing means one yeah it is matching okay next one four and four it is same same which means zero yeah it is matching okay next one four one it is it is decreasing decreasing means minus, minus one it is matching oh yeah oh this entire sub array is matching great bro great super great just simply go on and try for the next sub array but add your answer that you have got one good sub array so with this you can easily see that you go on to all the n sub arrays which you have and each sub array will be of size m then okay you have got n sub arrays each sub array will be of size m plus one and then you'll compare that with a pattern so that pattern matching will take o of m time so it will be o of n into m let's see see the code but so far you saw that pattern matching this you must have heard there's a standard algorithm for pattern matching if you have not seen we'll see that but up till so far you must have thought of what should be the improvisation which would for sure be very obvious but still we will see let's see the code pretty quickly that how this o of n into m again m by technical means it is actually less than equal to m so time complexity is o of n square also you can say that it's actually completely fine but uh, let's see the code so firstly we go on to all of my indexes now i simply have quick check if even i cannot make an array of size m plus one then simply break out because there is no obvious point to compare that now i will go on and keep on comparing that uh, bro can you please let me know that i i will go again you will see that okay j is less than m plus i j is less than m plus i if you go on and check j is less than m again you can say j is less than m plus i you can just simply go and tell that but here m if you remembered i have put a m m i put in as four which means it was actually m plus one now a minus one was here so technically my formula would have been this i plus m but i plus m would say that your j will go on from j will go on from point here to point here but you know that you have to compare to constant elements so technically my j should go on from j j j up to this point because j plus one will technically compare the last element of that sub array right now if i come back got that point right 
remember like watch that again got that because that is important because here i just imagine my m plus one as m itself so i place it a four here right cool now coming on back um we will simply compare on like simply now we have got a sub array starting from index i so we know that we will compare j and j plus one so I'll compare J and J plus one, J and J plus one, J and J plus one, J and J plus one. Now, if I compare that J and J plus one, which means J is more than J plus one. So it is decreasing. If something is decreasing and the pattern value is minus one, then I was good. Move on. If it is same and pattern is zero, I'm good. Move on. If it is less, which means Number of J is less than number of J plus one. So it is increasing, ascending. I am still good. Move on. Now, if I am moving on, moving on, moving on, I will never land onto it. Which means when the things are good, when the things are going good, which is not usually, uh, when things are going good, you will keep, simply keep on moving. You will never come on to this condition. But when the things goes bad, your flag will become zero and you will have to break out from this loop. As soon as your flag becomes zero, you will check because your by default flag, flag, flag was one, saying that everything will go good. Which, because we are optimistic, we always imagine that everything will go old. But if something goes bad, then flag will become zero. If, if still flag had been a one, which means that sub array was good, so simply increase the count. And that's, you can simply return the answer. So you can see that your time capacity will be O of M into N, and space is again O of 1. But as we simply saw that it's a string pattern match, that's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a simple pattern matching algorithm. Now, the famous pattern matching algorithm is KMP. Now, we have made a proper video on KMP, just write on YouTube, KMP by RM, you will get this video. And again, this is not like other KMP videos, we have properly discussed the intuition behind KMP because KMP is not like Rabin Kaap. It is not that easy, it is not that easily understandable algorithm. So many people just skip the intuition behind it, how it is actually working. Again, people did not even discuss the complexity of KMP. They just say, okay, we have a pattern of size M, we have a string of size N, we are just matching it, and, they, and, they, and, they, and then just, they just say that, okay, it's M plus N. But in that, we have specifically discussed why the time complexity is M plus N. Because they, in KMP, the loop R2, then why the complexity is just O of M plus N. Still, we have discussed that. So, if you have even watched it, uh, like other videos of KMP by anyone else, please, if you want to know the entire intuition, please go and watch the KMP video. Now, coming on back, it's exactly the same now. We know that we have a pattern. And we have, as we have been naming that, okay, one, one represents, it is ascending order. So I will represent that by a character because I know KMP is a string matching algorithm. So I'm kind of trying to convert my input. Again, you want to work on numbers, you can work on numbers also. That's completely fine because it will work on numbers also. But still, we are much more in, like, intuitive way is to convert that to a string. Although you might say, okay, I'm not so much more complex. The code will become a bit long, but it will be much more understandable to you. Right? Again, if you're very smart, go ahead with, com with, with comparing the number itself. But for the folks, I'll compare that with a string, which means I'll convert the pattern into a string. So it was one ascending. I'll convert that to a string, which means A. Same, zero, which means same value. I'll convert that to a S. Minus one, which is descending. I'll convert that to a D. Make sure you keep all the characters as distinct because you want to make a distinct pattern. Now, uh, I'll convert this nums alter to my string. How I'll convert? Okay, 1 and 4. 1 and 4. It is increasing, which is ascending. Okay, A. 4 and 4, same. S. 4 and 1, decreasing. D. 1 and 3, ascending. A. 3 and 5, ascending. A. 5 and 5, same. S. 5 and 3, descending. D. So now, I can make my string as saying A, S, D, A, A, S, D. And my pattern was, as you can see, it was a ASD, ASD. So I can easily see that, okay, this pattern ASD is matching here and here. And that was the actual substring which was matching. So I can say it's a simple pattern matching algorithm. I'll use the exact same boilerplate code of KMP. This is the exact same code of KMP, which I've discussed in the video itself. Exactly same code. And we always, in the, all the videos of KMP, we are using the same piece of code. Again, why I was specifically referring about the time complexity is because of the reason we have two loops. And people think, again, people will just simply go and say it's a, oh, because it's a pattern of size M. Uh, even, even, even one of the best instructors, Abdul Bari, also just simply specifically just like said, okay, it's a M, it's a N, so it's a M plus N. It's very hard to prove it. So people don't prove it usually. But yeah, if you want to know, you can just go and watch that video. Now coming on back, as we said that, okay, we will convert minus one to descending, zero to straight, which means same, and one to ascending, which is 
increasing i'll convert my pattern pattern to a pattern string p string which means same if the pattern is one simply push back a zero s minus one d simply i convert my nums into also a string which means saying n string nums into a string okay if something is increasing have it a same s decreasing d now my both have converted to a string as you have simply seen that we usually make one string out of my pattern and my string so usually what we have a pattern hash my string and then i apply kmp on this specific piece of code on this specific piece of string final string so here i converted my p string hash and the main string and then i'll apply my kmp on this specific input string because of this the lps array longest prefix which is actually again longest proper prefix which is actually matching with my suffix this will actually try to make the lps as what matches with this pattern again if you are also confused in this just simply one solution nine parents one solution kmp video right again you can do it with actually your uh, raven cap also but still uh, i prefer kmp as a shorter more fast as in like shorter code with no collisions because see again if you just simply go and apply raven cap that will be actually give you collisions so you have to apply a double hashing in your raven cap so if you have not known uh simple raven cap will never work so you uh, the most optimal approach for raven cap itself is double hashing which we will go on and bring the video on that also but still that code becomes four times as big as your simple as your simple kmp code so it's in in a contest it's very 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 good to actually use rabin sorry to actually use your kmp rather than rabin cap again with rabin cap test case with single hash can still pass but i'll never recommend using a single hash in rabin cap now coming on back um that uh, we will simply apply your kmp on s down then we'll get a, a kmp vector or it is also called an lps array now in this lps array I can start off from the index zero itself, but up till your index m, you have simply pattern. But you have to compare the actual string. So you you start off from the index m itself. Now because of this, I will compare if the LPS of that specific ith index if it is equal to m, which means that specific was matching my pattern. So I can simply increase my answer, and thus I can simply return my answer. Thus the complexity is actually o of n plus m. it's the same complexity as that what we have seen for for your kmp again space right now although it's o of m plus n but in kmp i have already discussed that here you can optimize the space to only use the space of o of m because you only want to maintain the lps of pattern itself that's that's more than sufficient but usually m and n both are same and again you can tell the interviewer that space is o of m in best case for kmp but uh, we don't want to like have much more space optimization as in like see m and m into like see o of space of o of m because we know that o of m is actually equal to o of n it is roughly same as o of 2 into n right so why to just go into such thing which can actually increase your code length so it's still o of n plus m which is still o of n which is still o of m so yeah the space which is used is o of m plus n again the best case complexity for kmp in space will be o of m only which means o of pattern because lps array is needed only for the pattern that's it cool thanks for watching see you goodbye take care bye bye